Greetings and welcome to Austin, Texas Gardening. My name is Matthew Wadrich, and today we're going to be talking about gardening in containers. So this video is going to be really cool. In this one, we're going to be doing a sweet potato harvest from this bucket over here of sweet potatoes that I've been growing since January. And we're also going to be talking about some general outdoor and indoor container gardening. So I have a whole bunch of plants that I'm growing inside. I covered all of these plants in last week's video when I did a garden tour of everything that I'm growing on my property. And I think this one's going to be a lot of fun. I want to get into the sweet potatoes quickly because I know that's probably why you clicked on the video link. But just real briefly, when I started off on YouTube about eight months ago, I grew a mango and avocado seeds. And I still have my original avocado seed right here. Although my mangoes died, I'm going to talk about that more at the end of the video and some gardening with these containers. So if you're interested, check the description. I'm going to have some timestamps so you can skip forward if you only care about the container gardening and you don't really care about the sweet potatoes, even though uh, this is container gardening as well. But if you're really interested in all the sweet potatoes, and I also have some uh, Yukon Gold potatoes here, we're going to get started talking about potatoes. So again, just to recap, January 7th, I planted a full potato. Now I'm gonna stand up and walk around and get the camera pointed down into these buckets so you can kind of see what I'm talking about a little more clearly. So here we are coming in for a close up. This is the potato that I was referring to. It's been in this container for about 120 days, which is the appropriate life cycle for growing a sweet potato. And I did this differently than most people do. Many people told me in this original video I should not have planted the entire potato, but rather cut off the sweet potato slips and plant them individually like I've done in this bucket over here. Now, my film when I planted this bucket got destroyed, but I only planted this like two weeks ago uh, in kind of mid-April. And so these are just sweet potato slip cuttings. Some were smaller. Uh, well, they all were smaller. All of them were smaller than this one right here when I had originally planted this. And over here on the right, this one's the most interesting. So unfortunately, all of my time-lapse equipment is tied up doing a long exposure time-lapse for my wonderful peach tree over here. So I couldn't really capture this super well. I tried to do it with my GoPro and um, the compression software just isn't as cool as my iPhone or rather I just don't know how to use it as well. But this was really interesting. Two weeks ago I planted these Yukon Gold Potatoes and they're planted in the bucket much differently than my sweet potatoes which obviously the slips are planted towards the surface. You can legit see the original starter potato right here so you know it's right at the surface. But these Yukon Gold Potatoes, I planted down here. So I put about two to three inches in the bucket, planted them in the bucket. These are all, uh, I forget if I'm getting this acronym right, HDPE, HDE, they're, they're level two recycled material. So these are food safe material buckets. And maybe about a week ago, I noticed the ground all cracked and split up on the top of this sweet potato container. And I was thinking to myself that maybe some squirrels or neighborhood cats or something was digging in my bucket, but I discovered it was just sprouting. And it looks like it's doing really awesome. I'm super excited to see how this turns out, but you guys are gonna have to wait about two to three more months for me to deliver an update on this. So stay tuned, in July I'll have something. This bucket also being planted so recent, I'm gonna have something around maybe July, August, but this one is the fun part for today. So. I'm anticipating there are some sweet potatoes in this bucket. I don't really know what this means, but I can kind of see from the side of the bucket, and you can probably see this too, these weird black spots. I assume that is, those are air pockets or some sort of, you know, distortion uh, from it being in this weird position for so long. I've heard people saying that you know they're ready to harvest when the leaves start falling off the vine, and that's clearly kind of what's happening here. As you can see down there, I hope the light resolution is good on that. But this sweet potato has been in the bucket for four months. It's ready to harvest. I've been watering it probably, I don't know. I don't know how many ounces. I don't want to try to estimate. I have been soaking the surface of the soil maybe once a week for four months. So what we're going to do is find a nice place to turn this bucket upside down. And I'm thinking we're going to do it in my wheelbarrow over here. I don't like to film when it's so sunny because on, honestly the light distortion usually messes things up, but I think it's going to turn out okay. I'm going to get our camera set up back on the mount, get it positioned right, and we are going to see what's in that bucket. All right, guys, here we go, the moment of truth. So just for the record, you always want to make sure that what it, whenever you're growing food in containers, I'm obviously using paint buckets. I obviously have a 
a uh, wheelbarrow that looks like it's stained with cement. This here is white limestone from bricks that I moved around. Make sure that whenever you're doing container gardening, use safe, uh, contain food safe uh, equipment. You don't want to use a wheelbarrow that has a bunch of cement in it. You don't want to use pots that have been um, used with paint or turpentine or any of that kind of stuff. You want to use clean, food safe stuff. So though this kind of looks like concrete was in here, there was not. I just want to clarify that. So now it is time for the moment of truth. Time to see what is in our bucket here. I have high hopes. Hopefully pests can get to it. I see some slugs on the bottom and aphids on the bottom of my container. So might have a spoiled crop here. Get our bucket and try to get it loose. Wow. Look at that. That is nice. I like the looks of that. I'm thinking there are some tubers in here. We're gonna just kind of pry this apart and see what is in our container. So. Fingers crossed. Oh, look at that. Very cool. Wow. So these aren't very big but there's some real sweet potatoes here. I've read online you have to cure these. I'm not sure what that all entails, but I'm gonna have to do a little bit more research and find out. So this is our main sweet potato. Strangely enough, it still looks good enough to eat. And man, takeaways from this, this might be the result of planting the whole potato in the container. These potatoes look a little small. It might also just be the result of gardening using a paint bucket. So there's not as much space uh, for them to move around, but we do have one, two, three, four, we call this four and a half potatoes, right? Like these are kind of potatoes. I don't know what you can make with these. This is a French fry. Uh, <laughs> I think, man, I don't know if aphids did me over. Nah, no, we have a few other little parts here. Some of these look a little discolored. I don't know, again, if that's the result of something that I've done improperly or anything else, but I'm going to stir this around a bit just make sure I didn't miss anything. All in all, very cool. I don't think it's that I left them in. I didn't leave them in long enough. Um, I know the, the leaves were kind of green, so if you have any advice in the comments for what, what I might improve upon in the future, like, what on earth is this? Is this a potato? Is this a failed potato? I don't know what that is. Ew. Ugh. Yeah, like, like, what is this at the surface here? I don't know. Very, like, this is like a spongy, uh, you know, maybe there's some sort of, some sort of, uh, uh, like mildew that's gotten to them. I'm not sure. I think this is what we're, we're going to be left with. And, uh, yeah. So there you have it, folks. This is our baby sweet potato harvest from our little five gallon bucket. All in all, a pretty cool experiment. I think I have some things to improve because none of these sweet potatoes look as robust or as filling as our starter potato. But let me know in the comments what you think might be an improvement. Hopefully our Yukon Gold and our additional sweet potato cuttings, the way I took these actually off the sweet potato, may prove more fruitful. So stay tuned for part three of the sweet potato video series that I'm doing. Moving on. We're gonna be talking about this avocado seed right here and this mango and that avocado hiding behind the chair here and our three containers. So I'm gonna start off over here. This avocado seed right here is my original OG avocado seed from last year. One of my videos, the one that actually has the most views, is a 30 second time lapse of this avocado seed growing over the course of 90 days. And you can see what remains of that avocado seed. It is now a blackened, dried husk attached to my withering avocado plant. And this avocado plant has just suffered a rough winter, low sunlight conditions all around, tiny container, and I, I wanna give him a bigger home. So I'm gonna be putting this avocado seed 
in one of my larger containers here. I have a 15 inch ceramic glazed terracotta. It's not terracotta, it's ceramic. A ceramic container. And my goal is to give this avocado sapling a home in which he can put down a better root system, also be moved into the garage, preferably with a grow light this winter so that he will be as healthy as this other one. And so for perspective, this one right here was started, let me think, when did I start this one? Um, probably December. If I just compare them, the one on the right, I started in December, and the one on the left, I started in uh, September. So the one on the left's actually four months older. If I kind of hold them up, oh, oops, let me that real quick. I hold them up next to each other. You can see the one on the right looks a lot healthier and it stops tipping over. It also has a pretty robust root system. It's been living in this cup since Christmas. And so I wanna give both of these guys a better home. Additionally, I have one of my OG YouTube videos is how to grow a mango from seed. If you're interested, you can go look it up. And I've had this mango in a bag since March the 18th. It's almost like two months now, kind of forgot about it. And it looks like it's doing pretty well. I was thinking I would pop this in one of these containers over here. I'm not exactly sure how we're gonna split this up today, but I'm gonna go ahead and fix my camera to a tripod and we'll get planning. All right, so that actually doesn't look half bad. I guess these containers are probably about 40, 45 liters, being that 35 fits so snugly in this, uh, in this here container. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to, let's get this a little closer. I'm gonna remove some of this. Should not be doing this barehanded. Should have grabbed gloves. Hopefully I don't regret that too much. I'm gonna transfer our OG avocado into here. careful with this guy. I don't know how robust the root system is. Oh, wow. Oh, it's falling apart. Oh, hopefully it's not too damaged. Looks great. Wonderful. So, on to the next one. We're going to do this guy right here in one of these smaller containers. All right, let's get this avocado planted. I'm gonna go for a little close up here on the root system just so you guys can check it out. And just the plant generally. Look at that. It's pretty cool. I like seeing how this turns out. So we're gonna put this guy in. It's right here. Give some space spread out. We're not going to want to pack that down too much. It's nice for the, the roots to get a little bit of air. So here we go. This is our mango, which I'm going to try to hold it in shade so you can actually see it. We got our nice, nice tap root there. So the roots are attached to the paper there. They might still break, but it's going to be that much worse if I don't at least make them a little damp. We have a little bit of give here. Oh, yep, that one broke. So we can salvage this last one. Come on, work with me. Perfect. All right, so we have those roots again. I'm trying to keep it in the shade so you guys can see it. Nice big formation. I don't know if I should call that the trunk or not. Kind of interesting growth here, but very cool. We're gonna stick this right in here. We're at our root, low soil our stem of soil. So I'm gonna try to be gentle with it. And voila, there you have it. Not confusing, not hard. It's super easy to, to plant these, it's super easy to grow them from seed, and it's super difficult to keep them alive. Our mango died last winter. And so this is our junior mango replacing senior RIP. There you have it folks. So this is my outdoor container gardening situation. I obviously have a lot to clean up out here. The nice white planters might go out front once our pineapple starts putting down some, uh, some roots here. 
But let's head inside real quick and I'll show you guys our propagation station inside. You guys can take a look at some of the container gardening that I'm doing indoors. So before we head inside, I had an impromptu change of heart and just decided to go ahead and move our new avocado into this white planter. I think it honestly looks a lot better in this than it would otherwise. I just kind of like symmetry and our nice patio looks wonderful this way. I also wanted to mention I have these two terracotta pots which I featured in previous videos. This jalapeno plant which I already put off a couple of jalapenos and this uh, I guess it's a five gallon. I don't know what that is, 30 liter uh, terracotta pot. And also these two habanero plants which look like they will be fruiting shortly. I don't know if you guys can see it there but there's some white flowers popping up on these so expecting some fruit from those soon very cool and then of course I'm just gonna leave this container empty and probably go back to the store and just get a nice another nice big pot for our pineapple when the appropriate time comes but I also wanted to get a close-up of this mango because I didn't really get that previously there it is looks great and our Home Depot buckets will grace our back patio where the neighbors won't have to complain about them inside so moving inside so this is my home. I filmed in here on a couple of different occasions, showing some of my indoor plants. My wife is hanging out with us just reading today. Hello. And this is the first plant I'm gonna be talking about. This is a pothos cutting, which we got from a friend. It's done super well in this little pot here. It gets some nice sunlight from our, uh, I guess that's northeast facing windows. The sun kind of rises over there. And so this plant's doing awesome. My wife bought these beautiful gold and white marble end tables, which grace our couch. And I think that this looks great. It makes our house look a little bit more like a garden. Over here, this is called a ZZ plant. This is something that I bought at a place called Desk Plants. They're in North Austin in the domain. And it's just a wonderful plant. Um, their slogan is hard to kill plants and Charity takes care of this one. How often would you say you water the ZZ um, plant, Charity? Between once a week and once every like three weeks. <laughs> there you go. Hard to kill. Highly recommend you get yourself a ZZ plant. I'll put the actual name in the bottom left hand corner. You can get these at any nursery or hardware store. And this is beautiful. We used to have uh, some plants over here on this, this bookshelf, but we moved them to the other bookshelf because the light from our east facing windows hits this bookshelf a little bit better. If you've seen my Good Friday video where I read from Isaiah 53 in April, you'll know that I've got some of the plants, uh, some of these plants over here are the primary source for uh, some of the cuttings we have. And so this first one is a Monstera, obviously. It's very iconic and you can see how much it's grown since April, grew an entire new leaf. And basically what they do, these plants have this kind of iconic separation. If I hold it up against the white paint there, you can tell what I'm talking about. And over time, these kind of wrinkles just develop and separate, and then you wind up with that very iconic look. This pothos has seeded a whole bunch of cuttings that we're gonna take a look at here in a moment, as well as this wandering Jew plant, and our friend Katie has given us both of these. No, actually, but that top pothos, that's also from Desk Plants. Oh, that's a Desk Plants. You're right. That is, this is from Desk Plants as well. Hit up Desk Plants, plug, respect on Desk Plants. And then the Monstera came from our friends, the Pops. And so this was just a cutting. Uh, I've kind of already explained that, but it's really interesting how robust its root system became before we put it in a pot a couple of days ago. Over here is where I work. This is my desk. I have a nice little view. I used to be able to see a cattle ranch through this window until they built this row, this row of houses. And uh, it's, it's still nice. I can still see this guy, which is more than some offices. But it's right next to our propagation station. So I've talked about this in some previous videos. I bought these IKEA cactuses about a year and a half ago. And they look pretty cool. But one thing I'm really excited for is this pineapple. So as I've kind of alluded to before, I'm growing that store-bought pineapple outside, but these pineapple crowns are from Maui Gold in Hawaii. If you haven't seen my video on the Maui Gold pineapple plantation, I recommend you check it out, it's pretty cool. But I took these home with me and I'm repotting them. I'm gonna have a whole separate video on pineapple in the future. I know pineapple isn't really a house plant, but it is a plant in my house. 
and you can see here it's already developing some roots so if i kind of move it around a little bit there we go yeah it's pretty cool i think if i am able to care for these right maybe we have a bit of a warmer winter this season that's going to turn out pretty cool so stay tuned for the pineapple video coming soon I'm also going to be doing a video on habaneros, which I'm regrowing some store-bought habanero seeds. And they're kind of cool. Not really regrowing. I bought habaneros, ate them, and these are the seeds. So I'm growing habanero seeds. It uh, should be pretty cool. I'm also going to do a video on that. And these, these plants here, back to the house plants, these are not, I don't think they're pothos. They look kind of like it. So this is much much more like a highlighter color, kind of like a yellow green. And this is kind of like a pothos, but it has these yellow green stripes on it. They may be pothos, I'm not really sure. If you guys know what these are, I DM in the comments. But these are cool. We're gonna get them on a bookshelf at some point. We're just uh, trying to determine a place with some nice light. And since they've recently been repotted, as recent as last week, we just wanna leave them in a window for the time being. And then right here by the door, uh, before we go over there, we have a little sanitization station for our friends that come by because of a, uh, you know, plague. And this is one of our pothos cuttings from the pothos that was over there on the bookshelf next to the Monstera. It's just cute. It goes really well with our nice little backsplash here. And finally, in conclusion, we have these beautiful plants here, left to right. This is a Fetonia, a Pothos, a Wandering Jew, and another Fetonia. Or <laughs> another Fetonia, I'm sorry, another Pothos. And so the Pothos and the Fetonia cuttings are all from those plants from the bookshelf. And we're just gonna find places to put these in the house, maybe a, you know, I was thinking even in the shower, like a, a nice place that's really humid with uh, a nice, light. I'm not going to fill my shower, but there's a big window in there and I figure these might do well in there. And the Fetonia is actually a star from one of my previous YouTube videos where I put an hourglass next to it and just filmed it wilting and perking back up. It's grown quite a bit, but I'm not sure what's going wrong here. We figured the root system was getting choked out because it dropped a whole bunch of leaves, but it's been growing just with less leaves. And you, you can see it's got new growth, but I'm not sure if there's something wrong with our soil, or if there's, you know, we didn't prune it enough. If you have grown Fetonia plants, uh, let me know in the comments something that's worked out well. So these are our house plants. We're, we're looking to get more. If you guys have any recommendations for anything that you'd recommend I try to grow inside or maybe purchase, let me know. I would be happy to give it a shot. There's one last plant I wanted to talk about and this one was doing so much better last year, but this is representative of so many things I've said about gardening, specifically that a huge part of the hobby of gardening is just watching your plants die. So this is a type of succulent. It's called a string of bananas. And this section up here is what it looked like when I bought it. And these thin, wispy, lame strands are, <laughs> and dead strands are, uh, it's conditioned now. So we bought this cool octagonal wall, wall hanging planter maybe about a year ago. And I bought this string of bananas at some nursery. I don't remember which one. And it has just done so poorly. I don't know if it's not enough sunlight, if it's something, some issue with the soil, if it was an overwatering issue. We've been watering this one maybe like once every like week. And it has this cool method to catch water. It's not moldy or anything. And the sun rises right over there behind the peach tree facing east. So I would expect that this thing gets hit with a bunch of sun every day. I would expect it to be doing better, but it's just not. And we're probably gonna replace it with something shortly, but there you have it, folks. That is the tour of all the plants in my lovely home. And with that, we're gonna head back outside and wrap up the video. Well, there you have it, folks. I appreciate you guys joining me for a tour of some of my inside house plants and my outdoor patio. I think things look a lot nicer and organized this way. I hope our two avocado plants and our fruits and vegetables in containers continue producing. And I just appreciate you guys watching. If you have any advice for me, especially on growing sweet potatoes in containers, 
Leave that advice in the comments. If you think that there's something I could grow inside or outside that you'd like to see me do a video on, just go ahead and mention it and I'll try to if I can. And thanks again for watching Austin, Texas Gardening.